Hi everybody! I built a shed! This is a 12 by 8 foot shed that I built using a number of techniques from Home Renovision DIY, probably my favorite build stuff channel on YouTube. Keep in mind that I am not a professional, so whatever you hear here today, don't try at home without doing further research. I would consider this a shed building chronicle and not a step-by-step -step detailed instruction on how to build a shed. There are other sources for that. So without further ado, let's begin the journey. You may have seen my other video for how to construct a foundation. So we're going to go from step two, and that is building the framing. So to save myself some time and effort on building day, what I'm doing today is measuring and cutting and uh, prearranging all of the sides, the back and the front of my shed so that when it comes to the time, I won't make any mistakes right before it's got to go up. I've already done the two easiest ones, the back and both of the sides. I guess that's the three easiest ones. I want seven feet height for my back wall and it's slightly under seven feet on the sides because they don't have a double top plate. So for the front, I want it to be exactly eight feet tall to the top of the wall. So I need to cut four and a half inches off of the end of each post. Instead of 96 inches, it's going to be 91 and a half. Just get rid of some of this crud on the edge. Goodbye. Just gotta keep cutting the rest of these. Here we go. How did he get the stuff already? Where did those beans come from? Perfect space in the back. Nope, uh, hold on. It's a level. So I pre cut all the pieces in the garage uh, and then brought them out here and assembled them right here on the pad. And uh, now we're putting on the siding, so we're gonna make sure it's nice and square, then we'll erect the wall, and then we'll have two. We're coming along. Okay, so who's gonna be behind and out of sight? Uh, you. So we're gonna get a good action shot on wall number two. We gotta lift it up, just a little pass, and then slide it. Okay, you can go behind. We have two walls! Now we just gotta screw it together. Mm -hmm. okay. I hope that didn't come out the wall. It may have. I didn't get the angle very good. We gotta document everything. Yeah, see what you gotta understand is that this board warped. Grobars? Those big vices. Oh well, yeah, I do have some vices. The big ones. Put it on. Pull it down. Whoa! Not just a pretty face. <laughs> Dad, how many burgers you want? Oh, just one. Oh, I got it straight. Look. Oh yeah. Oh, that worked. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Nope. That's it. That looks pretty good. That's all framed up. <gasps> good job, everybody. So now it's time to attach the siding. Because the siding has to lock on the outside of this, we have to come in three and a half inches on each end of this frame. But to make sure that all the grooves line up with our posts, we have to then go 12 and a half inches here and then continue our 16s from there. Oh! Hey! Good teamwork, boy. Good teamwork. <laughs> Don't trip on the cords or the drills. Don't trip on the cord. So if we line this one up perfectly with the middle post, it should be three and a half inches overhang. We'll double check. Three and a half inches. So we're going to get one corner secured with a nail so I can double check that corner. Here we go. Here we go. Spot on. Look at that, even with a crooked nail. What we've learned is if you aim right here where the top post is, you're gonna hit the screw and the nail's gonna bend. So we come in a bit. 
What you doing there? What am I doing? Yes. The bottom frame piece for the window to go in. Oh, nice. It'll sit right on top of that. Lovely. Let's hope so. All right, so now we have the frame for the front wall put into place. We did the full length studs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then around the door, what you do is a jack stud, which is gonna be exactly the height of the doors that I have. Once we get it all properly installed, we'll take the sawzall and cut the bottom plate out. So the next thing we gotta do is put the siding on. Here we go. <laughs> so now we're just bashing in some more nails to make sure the siding is secure all over the building. We're gonna make sure we bash all the nails in around where I'm gonna cut the window so it doesn't go like this while I'm trying to cut it. Take a step inside. I will. I'm trying to get the whole experience. Classy, classy. Oh yes, thank you. Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. So what I've got to do now is cut up the spots for my window. I've nailed all around it so it'll stay nice and secure. I'm going to use this bad boy in all four corners so that I can get my sawzall in there. Let's try. So I haven't used a sawzall in quite some time. As far as I understand, you just go and it goes. Vibrates my whole goddamn body. <laughs> Now, if I'm as professional as I think I am, this window should fit right in this hole. Damn, it's so close, isn't it? Professional window installation take two. Easy enough. I just it's just a sample. Come in. After framing the walls, we had to do the roof. Okay, so I used this uh, fake ceiling joist to trace a line along my siding, and you may notice it's not perfect. But here's the best part. It doesn't matter because I'm going to cover that with the trim on the outside. I did a little bit of trigonometry and I found out over eight feet I went up one foot which gives me an angle of seven and one eighth degrees. So I set my chop saw to seven and a smidge because it doesn't have eighths of degrees in the chop saw. Close enough. So what I'm doing now is making a template which I'm going to go ahead and trace onto all of my other ceiling joists. We can see there's an angle. No angle? Angle. Oh, he's in the shed. He's in the shed with Rocky. We've got 10 foot lengths for our roof. On the back, I'd like a six inch overhang and because we're attaching trim to the outside, what we want to do is make this even with the edge. I'm going to use this to line up with the edge so that I screw this down and then attach this beam from the outside this way. So I'm just going to come down in here, install this bad boy. I bought a thousand pack of screws. So now all I got to do is go to the other side measure that to be exact and drill it into this. You messed up? By getting up the ladder without the screws? Ah. Uh. Yeah. That's a silly. Oh, look at this branch. Could have cut that. 
bit of a slopey situation. All right, let's up with the English accent. Lucas. Do you want me to, oh no. You dropped a screw. You could probably delete that take. I'm not deleting anything. Okay. Okay. So I get up the ladder. I take my measuring tape. Six inches to the thing. Right in there. Nice and tight. There we go. We'll just double that up. There we are. That's secure there for now. We're gonna do that one at the front. That's in there. Whoa, whoa. Okay, that's the two side pieces. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Rocky, what are you doing in there? It's back here. I know exactly where my 16 inches are. At the front, though, I haven't marked it exactly where all the 16s are. So I gotta go up and do that. <laughs> I'm using my one and a half inch screws and these here hurricane ties to tie my ceiling joist down. I'll make sure that they're the right distance after I secure it to the face here. Might have the wrong size screws, but I think they'll do's. They'll do's? Oh yeah. You get this bad boy like this, pinch you like that, put you in like this. It's not quite strong enough like this. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna add some screws. Then we proceeded to cut all of the rest of the lengths and install them into the front and the back. After that we put half inch OSB plywood onto the roof. Trevor what are you doing? Well I'm securing the roof board to the ceiling joist. Otherwise, it could come off in the wind. Oh. Sometimes you got a dad who's screwing things in. It's all in how you hold your mouth. Once this piece is that much secured, I don't mind climbing up there. To... As you can see, the roof is strong. Strong as me, at least. If it's strong enough for me, it's strong enough for a lot of snow, I hope. Anyway, I've installed the rear drip edge. Now I'm putting the first layer of underlayment on top of that. So you always want to create a step down so the water on the top goes down and off and not underneath anything. So that's what I'm doing, using these little plastic cap nails to hold down the underlayment. And I got my handy pink towel to save my knees. Rocco? Hi. All right, well, we got our roof beer. That's very important. celebrate that I've got all my underlayment pinned down. So now what I've got to do is take my drip edge and install it on the side. But I'm gonna have to do a little bit of finagling to get that on there. You pass the uh, scissors? Yeah. <laughs> now we're working on shingles. So I'm sitting and hammering. That's it. Not much more energy, but I got a long way to go, so I'm powering through. Oh. Ugh, we're out of beer. You see, what you gotta do is overlap your tar strip with the edge about one inch so that the nails can get through both sets of shingles. If you're gonna try this at home, save the effort, find a nail gun. Then I had my old friend Eric come over and help me with this delightful trim. So I last left you, I was uh, working on the roof up top and what I ended up doing is finishing the front edge. Oh, double, we need double indicator. Right there, the front edge, the drip edge to keep the water off of the front of the shed. Ooh. It's going to force it down onto the shingles off the back side. That's what we want. The next thing I did was come along and paint the shed barn red. So I got good friend Eric to come by today and help me put up the trim. What we had to do was cover each corner of the siding because there's a gap there and it's not waterproof. So what we did is came along with our pressure treated deck boards 
measured with great precision, connected them together both to the wall and to each other to create this nice fresh seam. We're just going to have to come through, add some wood filler so it's nice and flush before we paint. Here's what it looks like when it's filled with wood filler but hasn't yet been sanded. Notice the pretty pink. Ooh. 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 So we had to come along around my door frame here and add some flourishy flair. Right here at the top, pagoda style. So we're gonna come back and I'm pretty certain I left enough room for the doors to fit. We're gonna find out soon. Happy chili time. It is chili time. It's chili time. I'm gonna bend down. Oh. Also important before we paint, we're gonna have to come in here and cock. So along the trim it'll be great because the trim will be white and the cocking will be white. I found these old doors in the basement when I moved into this house and they were dark brown. So I sanded them up, painted them gray, and then I added some of this fence gate hardware to make it look a little more barney. Today we're painting the doors that are going to go on the shed. As you can see, this one was painted a stupid color of blue. So I sanded as much off as I could and now I'm painting it charcoal gray. Yep. This piece is for the base of the doorway. Boop. So what I want to do is use this here one inch thick wood to be my foot of the door where the doors will seal properly when I install the little rubber flap. I'm gonna get my saw at 45 degrees. Always do it unplugged. One of those. And one of these. Here I have the sweet latch. This is double-sided latch so I can escape if I'm stuck inside. You see, you see, ooh. Clips right in there. And then at the bottom here, I added door sweeps that will keep the rainwater out. I was trying to decide what I wanted to use for flooring for the bare baseboards are not acceptable for an environment that's going to get wet like a shed. So what I did is went ahead and bought this uh, rubberized, grippy, and waterproof membrane that I installed here on the floor. It took some doing, because I had to do it all by myself. I had to shift it here, shift it there, shift it everywhere. But I did it. I got it in place. There it is. To ensure that any water from the rain or snow melt will go Around the shed, I added this three-quarter clear limestone. I'd like to thank everyone who watched all of my summer gardening and build stuff videos. I've got some interesting stuff in store for the fall. I hope it turns out well. And uh, if you haven't already, like this video. Go through, like all my videos, even if you don't watch them. And subscribe to my channel. It'll be a huge help. Maybe one day I could actually make some money off of YouTube. That would be... Incredible. So thanks everybody, and uh, stay tuned for more content. See ya!